Uh, I've been working on a, a couple of projects uh, on social norms and how social norms can quickly change. Um, in particular, how understanding how social norms might be sustained by misperceptions and how uh, factors that correct these misperceptions can actually lead to fast changes in norms. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, with my co-authors, we have a recent project on um, misperceived social norms about female labor force participation in Saudi Arabia. In fact, we showed that uh, the vast majority of married Saudi men are indeed privately supportive of female labor force participation outside of home, uh, but they think that most other men aren't. Um, so, you know, presumably they act in a way that is, you know, in accordance with what they think other people would judge them for. But when you correct men's perceptions about how they, the other men think, and we're talking even about their own neighbors, uh, we find that these men are more likely to, to let their wives join the labor force. And actually, we showed that four months after our intervention, our experiment, uh, the wives of these men are more likely to actually uh, start looking for jobs, applying for jobs, interviewing for jobs. So that shows that you know, norms might be sustained by misperceptions, but you know, simple mechanisms correcting these misperceptions by aggregating information uh, can actually lead to changes in behavior. This is an example. So I'm, I'm pushing this agenda on you know, understanding uh, how norms can actually change uh, through aggregation of information. There are a number of papers the, that I considered that were very influential, uh, they really inspired me. The, the earlier work by John List using ex field experiments to test theory uh, was, was um, among these papers. Uh, really, you know, a lot of my work is about using field experiments to understand mechanisms and test theory, and so the work by John List was super influential. Uh, the work, uh, when I was in grad school, was you know, really inspired by uh, the paper by Dean Carlin and Jonathan Zinman on observing unobservables. I think that's how, that's how the paper is called, using a field experiment to separate more hazard from adverse selection. Uh, I, th I think, you know, really how you can think about a clever design to separate mechanisms. Uh, also the work by uh, Roland Benabou and, 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 and Jean Tirol on, on, you know, on prosocial behavior. Uh, and, and so the theory work there and was very influential also. Uh, really inspired me because a lot of my work in the last few years has been about so understanding social image concerns. So like this, this framework that they have developed is really important to really help me think about, about the experiments. So I think there, there are a number of, 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 of papers and authors who are really influential, but it, I, those really come to mind when I start thinking about, about the, the work that has inspired me, yes. So there has been a lot of more and more people working uh, on behavior economics and, and using a variety of methods. I think that um, I think that their their work on understanding how beliefs are formed and how uh, people update their beliefs based on information that they're exposed to, how they choose whether or not they're going to be exposed to information. Uh, specifically in, in field settings, uh, also so meaning going outside of the lab as well, and really trying to understand this process. I think it's, this is, I think this is a very important work that should be done. I think a lot of people are starting to to, to work on these topics, uh, and I think it's very important. And, and you know, and it really relates to what's happening in the real world. You know, with you know, there's a lot of different sources of information. People are worried about how do people consume information, how do they process information, how do they selecting two different sources of information. So I think it's both incredibly relevant and I think there's still a lot of room for, for work to help us understand the, these processes. So I think, you know, uh, understanding belief formation and belief updating, whether people, you know, the role of self-image uh, preservation and, you know, motivated beliefs. So I, th I think those, those are uh, very nice avenues for future research. Hi, I'm Leonardo Burstein from the University of Chicago. 